Okay, summertime, of course, the best time to get outside and get active. And whether you're a seasoned pro or a new athlete, stretching is key. Always key. Chiropractor Stephen Gray is here to help us get loose and limber before our favorite excursions. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Good, how are you? We're good, we're good. We're going to be even better after we stretch. So let's get right to it. And for those who love to be out on the water, kayaking, canoeing, you say warming up the shoulders is essential. Yes, so this exercise we're going to do, you can actually do with a resistance band or in a pinch, a pair of stretchy pants or leggings. Now, I know it sounds like I'm about to get you to fold laundry, but I swear you can use both. So the reason okay. I love this exercise <laughs> is because you use a lot of range of motion when you're kayaking. This exercise takes you through that range, but with a bit of resistance and control for safety at end range. So let's get right to it. So standing, holding your resistance band in both hands, a little bit wider than the width of your shoulder. Now, if you have any previous shoulder issues, I would grab that band even a little bit wider for that extra safety. From here, you want to maintain a bit of tension between your hands before you do anything. Maintain that tension the entire time. So you're going to bring your hands up over your head, maintaining that tension, and continue to reach all the way behind you as that band comes behind your head. Keep that tension and then reverse that action all the way up and back over your head to where you started from. Doing oh, this that exercise. Is a, that is a really, really good stretch, Stephen. Yes. Doing yeah. that exercise about 10 times before you hit the water, your shoulders are going to thank you that next day. All right. Let's go to what I know is a favorite activity of Carolyn McKenzie and family, water skiing. Great way to spend time yeah. on the lake, but uh, you say we need to stretch out our hips uh, actually afterwards. Yes. Yeah, so this one is for you, Carolyn. So when you're okay. water skiing, you're actually maintaining a position like this with your knees bent. A lot of your stability in your hips, as well as your knees, comes from your glutes, particularly gluteus medius. Now, the thing you need to know about gluteus medius is that it is triangle shaped. So if you're not adding motion during your stretch, you're probably not stretching the entire thing. So come with me and take a seat. You're gonna start yeah. by crossing one foot over your other knee. You should feel a bit of that stretch at here in that right glute. If you don't, pull that other foot a little closer and push that knee away from you. From here, you're slowly gonna scan that muscle, adding your motion. Drop that foot slowly towards the floor. Here, you're going through the entire muscle. If you get to a part that feels tight, pause, take a few breaths, send some oxygen to that muscle and continue on your way. Repeat on the other side, and your hips will feel so much looser after a long day of water skiing. Oh, you know what, Stephen? It uh, feels uh, really different on one side as opposed to the other. Is, is that usual? <laughs> that's, that's great. That means spend a little extra time on that tight side. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for turning my back to everyone. Mm -hmm. I uh, forgot the memo to not wear a skirt today hey. for oh. today's demo. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, many of us want to get out, of course, and uh, walk more often as well, Stephen, now that the weather is nice. But after a long walk, of course, uh, you know, we can feel tight in certain areas, including our feet. I really feel this a lot. So you got to stretch, actually, for our feet. Yes. So when you're walking, part of the action of walking is propelling yourself forward. We use the passive structures in our feet, that connective tissue. That connective tissue gets a little tighter and a little more stiff and sore as we increase our frequency and our duration of our walks. So that, that connective tissue on our foot, our plantar fascia, it actually goes all the way up the back of your leg. So today, we're going to stretch not only our feet, but we're going to stretch the entire chain of fascia up the back of our leg. So start okay. with me on your knees and on your hands. Curl your toes underneath you. And from here, you're going to press your hands into the ground, straightening your knees behind you, going into the yoga pose, downward dog. Now from here to get a little bit of an extra stretch, press those heels into the ground one at a time, and you'll feel that stretch through your feet up right into those glutes. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, a for effort. A for okay. effort. Tough one. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. For the cyclists out there, uh, you say always stretch the quads. Yeah. So I see a lot of cyclists stretching their quads like this. I'm sure you've seen that too on one leg. Nothing wrong with that stretch, but it's only one leg at a time. So I'm going to show you a stretch where you can do both legs. The reason being is because it gives you a bit of comparison. Just like Jeff found out with one of his glutes tighter than the other, this will give you info of what quad is tighter and you can spend a little more TLC on that quite tight quad. So start on your knees once again, curl your toes underneath you. Sit right back onto those heels and reach those hands behind you. Slowly walk those hands out until you feel a bit of that stretch in that front of your quad. Hold that for five slow yoga breaths, and you're good. <laughs> oh, yeah. What I is wrong I, with I can't you? even get there. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I'm more than serious. You're tight. <laughs> yes. Dude, you, you got to stretch to more. Me, <laughs> wow. Yeah, come see me in clinic, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning a lot this segment. That's but that, good. But That's that, really good. But I can that feel it. Good. Yeah. She's doing enough stretching for the two of us, Stephen. Like that, <laughs> I, I love think. it. Okay, I uh, love it. finally, the National Bank Open, of course, going on right now in uh, Toronto. Let's uh, talk uh, tennis and uh, racket sports. Is there anything you've got for us when it comes to helping out with tennis elbow? Yeah, so tennis elbow presents as pain on the inside of that elbow here from tightness and stiffness in our forearm flexor. So to stretch these stiff and tight muscles, once again, get on those knees and reach your arms forward. Palms are gonna be up, fingers pointing away from you. Extend your wrists so your fingers are pointing down and place those hands onto the ground so now your fingers are pointing towards you. From here, you can slowly lean back ever so slightly to feel that stretch through those forearm flexors. If you are feeling pain though in that elbow or any area that I've talked about today, Always bring up those aches and pains with your friendly local chiropractor. <laughs> those are so good. Those, this is all good. That quad. Yeah. We got to go back to that quad, Jeff. Do we? <laughs> do we? We, we got to work on that one. Okay. <laughs> Steven, thank you. No problem. Thank you.